there, Hot Wheels fans. I hope you're having a great start to your weekend. I've had quite a nice little morning, actually, out doing my normal Saturday first thing in the morning hunt. Um, I popped into Smith's and was not expecting to see swinging on the shelves door slammers. Yes, yes, you heard me correctly. Door slammers in Smith's. UK hunters get down there because you know they're going to be cleaned out pretty sharpish. In fact, I couldn't even find the RS 1600. So, luckily enough, I've already got it from my American adventure. But those of you that thought you weren't going to be able to find it swinging on the UK shelves, you're wrong. You're wrong. Get down to your Smiths before they're sold out. Right. Now that that's out of the way, we've got a really juicy video today because. Those of you that have been paying attention will know that I still have Ferrari and also Porsche to go through from my American adventure and get them cracked open. And today we are going to be doing Ferrari. Yes, I have in front of me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen to crack open with you. And there's a couple of other little loosey gooses that I picked up whilst I was on the travels as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to be cracking them open, taking a little look and putting them side by side with some of the models I had already collected and taking a little browse through those a few minutes ago. I've got quite a few that need replacing. They're pretty battered where I've found some loosey gooses out on toy fairs and car booties and God knows what else. So. Let's not delay, let's get on with it. I keep browsing down to this side because they're all here. So, let's start with Testarossa. So, I already have in the main iron version in yellow. And as I was just saying, some of these are a little bit battered. It's not battered, it's just got a couple of little knocks. As you can see through the front there, I think there was, yeah, there's a couple of little knocks through the rear there as well. It's not a bad casting. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for it, um, but this one here in white, fresh out the pack. So this one here was inside of my twin pack, Allison's twin pack. Allison's, why do I say Allison's? Albertson's, sorry. Albertson's truck with the Testarossa in like a little dual twin pack. Really, really cool little twin pack, but unfortunately I had to leave the Albertson's trucks in the States because they were a bit bulky to try and whack into the suitcase. So, the first one, the first one that we've got, let's have a little look at them side by side and check out both the color variations in the Testarossa. So yeah, you can see they're exactly the same casting. Let's start from the front. You will see there is the air intake grill is done in black. Um, little silver detailing for where the kind of fog lamps would be. You can see there is uh, the where the planting horse logo would be across the front. It is not actually a logo, but there is a raised detailing just to pronounce it ever so slightly. Okay, where else are we? On the front windscreen, you'll see that both of the, uh, the whites and also the yellow as well come with Hot Wheels, which is printed on the front screen. So yellow comes with yellow and the white comes with red. Yeah, through the sides, uh, really, really well done for the detailing again for the air intakes that run all the way down through the side. There is a very, very small, again, similar to how they've done for the Prancing Horse logo on the front. It's raised, but it's not uh, logoed itself for the indicator and also for where there would be a Pininfarina badge also. This white's actually really nice now that I've got it out the backpack properly and got some light shed on it. It's um, it's like a balloon white, so almost like a, a pearlescent white and probably isn't too dissimilar to the 288 GTO from the main line, um, if those of you know which one that one is. Right, okay, to the back. And again, they've done a really nice job through the back at picking out um, the kind of black plastic 
for the light bar that runs across the rear and they have actually picked up the Cavallino that's inside of that as well. You also see on the deck lids there is also more black plastic which is to replicate that kind of mesh detailing that's there. So the reason why I have these Tesserosas are oh, you will see the wheel variation the older style kind of blue cards and stuff, this is pretty much the only wheel variation that I'm interested in. I think the other ones look a little bit odd. So the big uh, five spokes with like um, circular detailing rather than this classic kind of five spoke. And the razor wheels are not up my street at all. I think they just make the cars look a little bit cartoony, whichever ones we're looking at, not just the Testarossa, but any of them. Right, yellow and blue and white is a good job. I just dropped the yellow and not my brand new white one. Lovely. Right, first casting that we do have right there, the Ferrari Testarossa. Next up, I have from my Albertsons truck packs again. And the first one to properly open. So we are doing 308 GTS in the red from the Albertsons Twin Pack. And this little beauty right here, which you will know that I overpaid ever so slightly for. This is a 15 buck piece, so not cheap at all. But the color is pretty. And also, take a little look at them side by side. I can see that there are actually some differences. They're not the same casting. So we're gonna compare them side by side and take a little look. Right, red from Albertsons out of the pack. That looked pretty at the back there, doesn't it? And the blue, so let's crack open the blue. Yes, you carded collectors, look away. Look away now, we're gonna be cracking open quite a few blisters today. Oh, that's pretty out of the pack. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Right, let's pop them side by side. Take a little look. Right, from the front, let's compare against them. Oh, that's, yeah, really, really nice. Right, okay, difference between red to blue. I think the actual width itself, it looks ever so slightly narrower in the blue variation than it does to the red. Right. Through the front, as I say, we have the Prancing Horse logo is on the blue, but not on the red. We also have the pop-up lights are quite nicely stenciled in, um, along with the front, I would say bonnet, it's not, it's a, it's a frunk on the front. So that has also been quite nicely detailed um, across the front there. Running underneath, you'll see that there's the black base has been pulled through for the front bumper. And underneath that, actually, it's, I would say it's actually nicer on the red, I think, for the splitter that runs through. Nice detail on the blue, but the actual shape and look of it on the red looks better, I would say. So coming up from there, the differences between, again, we have, um, it does look like a slightly higher roof line or uh, glass line on the red to the blue itself. But in the front, there is a yellow's Hot Wheel emblem and moving on to the sides. Now this is where, as I say, it really does look a lot smaller. I don't know whether it's uh, optical illusion, whether it's playing tricks on me or not, but yeah, it looks slightly shorter through the rear stance of the car. And you will also see, this is where it starts getting quite a bit different between the two. The rear quarter panel, uh, sorry, the rear quarter window um, is ever so slightly different. You will see that there is a plastic window on the blue and on the red, it's actually part of the metalwork itself. And there will also, um, there will also be like a, a roll hoop detail that runs over the top of the red, whereas on the blue, that is not present. 
Also on the side, you'll see the Cavalinos on the side for the blue and also the Pininfarina logo is just down there also. Running on exactly the same chrome fire spokes as I previously mentioned. This is the wheel that I think works, works best. Right, heading round to the rear. And again, I actually think the red is the better of the two. So from the bottom, we have the plastic uh, base obviously pulled through for the bumper. And again, nicer detailing on the red for the quad exhaust pipes, dual on either side. Moving up from there, again, I would say a nicer, um, nicer detail for where the number plate would be on the red as opposed to the blue. And also the light clusters as well. Look at how pretty it looks with the indicators filled in. Really, really nice job of that. And also, if you look at the lights around that detail, it looks so much cleaner on the red than it does to the blue. Right, okay, stepping up from there, we have completely different and I'll come back to this once I finished spinning around because you probably won't be able to tell um, but on the blue there is almost like a spoiler detail that runs over the top there is a difference between the red and the blue again for the boot I say boot is not it's the bonnet this time around so underneath uh, sorry on, on where the engine bay is You'll see on the red, there are some kind of plastic details for where the air release would be. And on the blue, completely different. They've made a, a kind of plastic detail for the whole piece rather than the inserts. Okay, next part that I would say is quite a bit different between the two will be the interior. So black on one and the beige on the blue. And again, this is where it really begins to look quite a bit different because on the blue, the seats look really quite small in there. Nicer detailing though, they've got this really nice, um, I won't say quilted because it's not quilted, but a sectioned seat. Same on the black, but it's a long section rather than a cross section for the seats. But again, I think in the cream with the blue works really, really nicely. Or sabia, should I say, as it would be in Italian for that colorway. But yeah, there we go. Now that they're off the carousel, let's take a look. As I was saying, through the back, there we go. That's the difference between the two. And it does, it always looks ever so slightly bigger on the red. In fact, 100% it is because the blue is shorter. So completely different casting. And I believe that the blue is the newer of the two, which is a shame because through the back, the red is the nicer. Right, there we go. So we've got the spoiler detail across the back. There we go, that's a better way of picking it up, which is not present on the reds. And showing you the interior, the black I'm sure is quite hard to pick out, but if you can make it out, you will see the difference between how narrow the seats are on the blue to how wide they are on the black. Right, 308 GTS done. Next up, another 308, and this, this one right here, again, comes on the classic fire spoke or comes on the big oversized holy fire spokes, which look awful, but this color is pretty, and that's the main reason why I picked it up. I was looking for it previously before, couldn't find one in the UK or Euro, but I did find one in Peterson Museum. So yes, again, overpaid for it. I think it was 15 bucks in the Peterson or 12 bucks from memory, I cannot remember, but it was definitely dearer than some of the other Ferrari castings and in fact was the only one that the Peterson had. So let's get it out, let's take a little look. That color is really pretty in the brown. So blue card cracked open. Oh. oh yeah. Oh, and this is a really nice one. I'll tell you why, because it is metal body, metal base. It feels nice and heavy. And this has got some really pretty detailing on it. Really, really pretty detailing. 
kind of running off the 308 that's uh, GCS that we've just done. This one's got some really nice little details. So I believe, yeah, closer to the scale, yeah, closer to the scale of the blue that we were looking at for the length and it's not as wide. So yeah, definitely I would say that the previous red 308 GCS that we were looking at is a completely different casting from slightly older, I would say. Please comment down below, correct me. If you've been collecting for that amount of time and you know, correct me, let me know. You can only learn. Right, 308 in brown, what a peach. Again, comes with a beautiful Sabia interior. So cream to all you English speakers out there. And taking a little look, let's go again from the front. Beautiful detailing through the front because it's metal base pulled through for the bumper. That looks very, very nice. Oversized Ferrari prancing horse logo across the front. And again, really nice detailing for the pop-up lights that would be through there. Through the sides, no Pininfarina across there, no kind of indicators, but you have got the really nice cutout detailing along the side there. Again, that interior is really pretty for this one here. Right, through the back, you will have, again, Sabia interior has been pulled through for the air release across the um, bonnet, boots, trunk lid, and through the back, this is probably the only bit that isn't as successful is where they pulled through the black base again to create the light clusters and that is all black across them. Which from memory, and again correct me if I'm not right here, but from memory on the real 308, I believe that was a full black panel piece. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this one here comes with a little yellow Hot Wheels detail through there. So let's just pop it down on the carousel just so you can take a slightly closer look. Next, next, next. Getting a little bit more modern now, people. So out of those uh, 80s style Ferraris and into something that some of you may remember. Well, the prettiest Ferrari in my opinion, and that is the 355. So these are the loose ones that I already had. We have the black, again, Sabia interior on that one there. And also the sky blue. And again, from when I picked it up, oh, I don't know whether someone sat on the glass work on the front, but that's a pretty sloped front for it. But yeah, again, back interior in this kind of uh, French blue, Paris blue, I'm going to call it. So those are the two that I already had. And to add to that, I picked up on the Adventure a silver with black interior to marry off with those three. And also another two 355s five that I've got down here in front of me. So let's start silver spider. And there we go in the spider. I cannot remember whereabouts I picked up the 355 spider from, whether it was the SoCal Hot Wheels collectors swap meet or if it was Frank and Son. Cannot remember. I think if any, actually it's probably the SoCal Hot Wheels collectors club. Can't remember, it's about three weeks ago now, so it's pushing on. Right, let's have a little look the three of those going around side by side as they are all part of the same casting so yeah as they go around you will see they are pretty much identical although the silver and the black 
In fact, I'm actually going to state it, the silver is the best of all of them. Reason being will be through the sides, you will see exactly the same chrome five spokes that we've been looking at on the slightly older Ferrari. We have the Prancing Horse logo on the side and also the Pininfarina detail, which is done um, down in the right hand side or left hand side, depending on which side you're coming from. Um, then moving through the rear, you will have again exactly the same. Black one is probably the best through the rear on this because it is plain without Hot Wheels logo and does also have the Ferrari logo on the top of the boot lid. Silver um, comes with the yellow Hot Wheels branding inside of the number plates. And again, a nice detailing because it has a silver base on the silver comes with metal exhaust pipes. So you've got the quad exhaust pipes, all in metal, which again, work really nicely. So yeah, through the insides, black on silver and black on the blue also. So they're both identical. Sabia again is going to be the nicest color because you can really pick out the detail on the interior. They did a nice job. Really nice job actually. Door cards are there, the seats are done beautifully. Uh, the kind of center console with the uh, gear shifter, everything else, it's all in there. It's all looking very, very pretty. Right, okay, F355 Spider. A further one to add to the two that I had. Right, next up. And I'm looking down to there, making sure that I haven't got any more hiding there. We have, again, same wheel variants, this time in the Berlinetta. So, nice. in yellow, let's crack this one right here open. Yeah, that's nice. Again, metal base, love these metal bases. They've just got such a nice weight to them really nice weights and again pulling through the quad exhaust pipes just to marry everything off quite nicely so that one there hot wheels detailing through the number plate on the rear and apart from that not a lot else little bit of excess paint on the front but i'm sure that is probably down to the techniques that they used to use back in the 90s but all in all, a pretty little casting. But I'm gonna rush through that one because the next one is the first of the special pieces, I'm gonna call them. So, yes, first Ferrari racer. Really, really happy to find this one here. Um, picked it up from the uh, SoCal Hot Wheels Collectors Swap Meet. So, this one here, I'm going to try and get into a little bit neater, um, as I would like to try and keep the box for this one here. So, snooze you lose, people. I was a little bit slow on the uptake, and that seems to have happened the last couple of weeks. I've I've snoozed on a couple of bits and missed out. One of which I'm trying not to think about because it was at least half price of what I've seen it, and it's one that I desperately want. Should I tell you? Should I tell you? Yeah, I'll tell you. It was Magnum PI. If if you're one of my viewers and you picked up on eBay a Magnum PI this week for £35. Yes, £35. Congratulations. Well done. I can't have everything. Okay, here we go. So, out of the pack... Beauty, what an absolute beaut. It's even prettier out of the pack. So we have this same kind of balloon white as on the 288 GTO. And also the Tesserossa we were looking at first thing. But oh yeah, lovely. Really, really nice this one here. So blue and white, let's start from the front. So we have the Cavalino is across the front. Through the side we have, most obviously, it's going to be those real riders with the rubber tyres. 
little red ring around the outside and the same six spoke that's pretty much evident I believe on all of the Ferrari racer. We also have the Scuderia shields through the side. We have again pulling through from the metal base you have the quad exhaust is filled in um, obviously silver to tie it in with the base again that works very very nicely and above that we do also have again a further cavallino in silver and also the indicator brake lights which also have a little silver center to them to pick up on the reverse lights and indicators as well yeah. inside of this one here comes with a silver interior and also we have a clear completely clear glass work for it as well oh i'm really pleased i picked that one up do you know what it's probably not going to be everybody's favorite but as i said previously the 355 was one of my kind of it was my car when i was growing up that's, that's the one that I dribbled over. That was my poster. That was my poster car when I was growing up. So yes, F355 in Spider and Berlinetta done. Right, next up, moving on to, I'm gonna go through these ones next up. So I have 360 and an F50 to open up also. Again, sticking with that same chrome fire smoke and a metal base. I think the F50 is metal base. It certainly feels weighty enough as well. Right, let's crack. Blue card open. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty. Nice, 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 nice. Right, okay, this, I think it is a metal base for this one here but in a flat, flat matte black underneath there rather than the kind of shiny silver. Right, cast, yeah, casting is really quite heavy. Really plain, really simple. Through the front, you've got Prancing Horse logo is filled in in yellow. Completely clear for the glasswork on there. A black interior. Through the rear, no temples in terms of painted, but we have got the lights are filled in, or etched, should I say. The exhaust pipes, quite a nice detailing with the diffuser through there, actually, that is quite nicely done. But yeah, pretty plain, besides that, a pretty plain casting. It looks neat, it looks tidy. These plain ones always do, I'm a big fan, big, big fan of the plain ones. Right, next up, F50 and then we'll whack them side by side and watch them go around very quickly. Right. F50, out you come. Right, slightly different on this one here. Prancing horse through the front, has got some black, some yellow and what looks like uh, the Italian flag just above it as well. Through the side, we've got Scuderia shields are on there. And there's also a very, very small Pininfarina logo, which is on the very bottom of the sill there as well. Towards the rear, we've got a little Hot Wheels logo on the left-hand side of the car. Then running through from the back, that is pretty actually. Really nice detailing through the back there. We've got details pulled through from the, must be the interior actually, because it's plastic, it's not, not metal. So yeah, through the back there, you will see that you've got the, uh, not light temples, but the light etchings, and also a kind of grill detail for where the air release for the engine bay would be. You'll see underneath where the number plate and where the quad exhaust pipes would be, that is in black metal pulled through from the base. of little random ones in the middle there. Next up, we have a Lucy Goosey. And this, I actually remember, this came from the Rhodium open air market. So this was one of the three Lucy Gooseys that I found. And the only thing that I found at a kind of random swap meet whilst I was out in LA. But yeah, in black, 
chrome five spokes through the sides, good rear shields are there, really nice light temples added to the front and also the Cavalina as well. Sorry, the prancing horse through the front, not the Cavalina. Interior wise, it is, it's not a Sabia. It is a slightly lighter, so it's like an off-white rather than a kind of creamy beige color. And then through the rear, light temples are etched. They are not filled in. Right, that was my black Lucy Goosey, which will marry off with the yellow and the red, both on the same wheel. So let's have a quick, quick little whiz around for those three and look at them side by side. this one here this is the original one that was from my collection um, and those of you that watch the video will know that I picked up the next one because I don't have gold wheels on mine <laughs> mine are a very very odd mix of black and gold so this little loosey goosey will be popping onto my eBay account at some point at quite a small little price because it's got a couple of chips and obviously it has black wheels it's all right on that side black wheel that side Pretty poor, pretty poor. So, I picked up a fresh one to replace it. 